Hi everybody. In this video let's discuss the reason for the very high transient short circuit currents in the vicinity of synchronous generators. A synchronous generator consists of a rotating rotor with a constant magnetic field and a stator with three phase coils. The rotating magnetic field induces a voltage in the three phase coils. One would expect that a short circuit close to an AC source would result in a steady short circuit current proportional to the voltage divided by the impedance of the source. What we see, however, is a much higher but rapidly decreasing transient short circuit current. It starts with a very high subtransient current evolving into a transient and finally into a steady state short circuit current. There is a transient and a subtransient time constant. So far we have looked at one phase only. In reality there are three phases, each one with an additional DC component. This was a real three phase short circuit. The following web page gives you access to the best browser based electric circuit simulation program. There is a free version and an excellent pro version. Now let's go back to our generator where the three bulk phase coils are evenly distributed in the stator for the best possible sinusoidal output voltage. Here we have a 3D graphics. Inside we have the rotor with the DC coil. For the rotating magnetic field outside we have the three faces in different colors. Here we see one loop of the DC coil in the rotor which is connected to a DC current source by means of a pair of slip rings. The coil produces the rotating magnetic field. Thanks to a clever connecting scheme of the coil loops in the stator and in the rotor, a very smooth sinus output voltage can be achieved with very little harmonics. On this scheme you see the damper winding cage in red and the DC field winding in yellow. For the damper cage is uh, for the damping of mechanical oscillations due to changing load conditions during operation. Here we see the connection of the DC source to the field winding. The DC source includes a diode for protection. In order to better understand the whole story, let's now go for a brief repetition of the induction law. The induced current in the short circuit traveling coil builds up a counter field and as a result the sum of the magnetic fields in the moving coil is zero. The counter field tries to penetrate the larger DC coil as well and would try to reduce the static field. Therefore, another current will be induced in the static coil which does not allow the moving coil field to penetrate the static coil. If you watch the green current arrows, you understand the role of the diode. Here you see the same arrangement but in a field calculation. The first run shows the voltage induced in the open moving coil. The second run shows the short circuit coil and the resulting short circuit current in the coil. Watch the impact of the magnetic field of the short-circuited coil on the total magnetic field. At the instance of the short circuit, the three stator phases produce a rotating counter field, the field in grey, which tries to penetrate the stator. In order to better understand what happens with the rotor field, let's now sit on the rotor and let the stator rotate around the rotor. Now you can look at the short circuit from the rotor's perspective. We replace the distributed stator coil by a long coil. We slow down the rotation a bit. Now you will see the effect of the three-phase short circuit. It produces a counter field to the excitation coil, the DC coil, which forces the excitation field to choose a path along the air gap of the generator instead of through the three coils of the three phases. The red curve to the right shows the excitation current jumping in order to block the field of the three phases to penetrate the rotor coil as well. Due to the inner resistance of the excitation coil, however, this block fades away and gradually the counter field of the stator penetrates the rotor field. This translates into a gradually increasing impedance of the generator, which is equal to a smaller and smaller short circuit current. The whole process happens within around about two 
100 milliseconds up to one second. We have two time constants, a subtransient and a transient time constant. This is due to the fact that there are two coils. We had a damping cage and we have an excitation coil in the rotor. Summary. The short circuit of a synchronous generator consists of a subtransient, transient and steady state component due to the coupling of the two rotor coils with the three state of phase coils. You can access my web page with a simulator. It allows you to investigate the effect of short circuits in your power grid models with synchronous generators. The transient model is implemented in a three-phase star-grounded source model. As an example, I draft a very simple test circuit consisting of a three-phase source and a three-phase breaker. One side of the breaker connects to the source, the other side is short-circuited by a wire across the breaker terminal on the right side. The start point of the generator is grounded. Double-click the source. For the transient model, I will enter the voltage in the transient input form, not here. Click on the Add Input tick box and press the transient button. Enter all the required data in the transient input form. None of them should be zero. The voltage is the nominal phase-to-phase -phase RMS value in volts. With the nominal MVA rating of the generator, the nominal current is calculated automatically. The impedance data require per unit values. The transient time constant is typically in the order of a couple of hundred milliseconds, the subtransient a couple of 10 milliseconds, the last time constant is the DC time constant of the short circuit current. Return to the main entry form, you see that the voltage has been taken over and has been converted to the usual peak phase to ground value. I intend to run the simulation for 400 milliseconds. The short circuit shall be interrupted after 300 milliseconds. Don't forget to tick the open after current zero box, otherwise you will get a mess with the recovery voltage across the, across the breaker. I want to see the breaker trace only, therefore I remove the voltage trace at the source. I input the simulation time and the number of steps. 4000 should be enough. I run the simulation and quickly I get the result. Here you see the green is the short circuit current, three phases and after current interruption of the breaker I see the voltage recovery across the breaker in blue. I have prepared a simple system with three generators. Each one of the generator has transient and subtransient model and the generators are connected to the system by means of uh, transformers and by means of short power lines and here I have a longer power line segment with a short circuit at the end of the line. Let's now run this simulation as well. Oops, one of the lines is too short. I have too few steps, therefore I have to increase the number of steps and rerun the simulation. It is a little bit less responsive because I have much more steps and here you see the result. Again, voltage before short circuit, then short circuit current and then recovery voltage across the breaker.